Caribbean Airlines forced to make emergency landing. Canu finds foreign weed on local wharf. Motley warns of Guyanese exodus. And g -Cob. Need I say more? I am Laurie Corporal Ford, and this is Uncut News. If you see news happening, send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. Around 4 this morning, a Caribbean Airlines flight from Piarco, bound for JFK, was forced to perform an emergency landing in Norfolk, Virginia. According to reports, a cracked windshield forced the pilots to take evasive measures to avoid a possible disaster. They did not indicate what caused the crack in the glass. Nevertheless, there were no injuries. Guyana is set to massively ramp up the rate of oil production by 2026. Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat said that by then, the government can expect to make around 50 oil lifts per year, which represents a massive increase from current exports of 4 and 5 lifts for 2020 and 2021 respectively. And at current prices of about $80 per barrel, 50 lifts per year would give us around 4 billion US dollars in profits per year. And that does not include the 2% royalty. So, good for us. Carnot agents busted 19 foreign sailors on Wednesday morning after 36 pounds of imported weed was discovered on the boat as it was docked at the GNIC wharf on Lombard Street. However, Kanu made it known that this wasn't that crappy bushweed your neighborhood dope seller pushes. This was the type of stuff Popcorn does like to sing about. So the weed had a hefty price tag of over 14 million Guyana dollars for those 36 pounds. The men are currently in police custody. Christopher Jones has decided to step down, allowing Vince Roy Jordan to become the PNCR's newest vice chairman. The two had originally tied in last December's elections, but in the interest of fairness, the young but politically experienced Jones has decided to give the newcomer Jordan a shot at the position of leadership. Jones still remains an executive member of the PNC. How magnanimous of him. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale is his 2016 Mazda CX-5. It comes with Bluetooth, mug rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo, LED fog lamps, electronic parking brake back camera, side camera, rear spoiler, and much, much more. Buy cash for $6.2 million. All pay down as low as $1,240,000 down, with around $120,000 monthly for five years, and it's yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the showrooms at lot 171 Bidoroshi, Queenstown, or lot 2 Lamar Street, and the America Century for this sweet tea. 23-year-old Chive Passard died last night, after he was inexplicably chopped to death by a spinning boat propeller in Port Kaituma. At the time of the incident, he was sitting at the back of the boat in question. He was taken to the nearest hospital where he died of his injuries shortly thereafter. Yesterday, 71-year-old pensioner Carlin Windsor Barrett was run over by a truck on Water Street near Munishwaz in Georgetown. The driver, Joe Man Joseph, said he was making a right turn when he felt the rear wheel of the vehicle run over someone. He did not see Barrett at the time. Barrett died at the scene, and Joseph was served the notice of intended prosecution. He did not have any alcohol in his system at the time of the accident. Unfortunately, this wasn't the only accident that recently involved a pensioner. Over in the diaspora, 75-year-old Chaldrika Ramkissoon was recorded as Suriname's second death of the year. Ramkissoon died on Monday of her injuries after being hit by a bus on Friday in Paramaribo. The accident left her in a coma with severe head injuries. Doctors had originally given her only 24 hours to live, but after she lived 24 hours, they decided to pull the plug, and she died on Monday. They did not state if the driver of the bus has been arrested as yet. Since we're speaking about the diaspora, today, Bayesians went to the polls in a snap election called by Mia Motley just days after officially becoming a republic. But in her last campaign speech before the vote, Motley encouraged her countrymen to wise up and improve their skills, as we Guyanese are no longer interested in fleeing to their shores, as we've got oil now. For decades, skilled and unskilled Guyanese of every profession moved to Barbados. 
but that trend has been in decline over the past decade. So, you're just gonna have to figure out yourselves over there, patients. We've got oil now. And you know what? When you come to Guyana, we're gonna put you on our bench. And guess what? It's going to be made of gold and oil. Aha! Uh -huh. Coming soon. Take a look at this beauty being constructed in a gated community called Richmondville in Guyana. It features four bedrooms, one pool, with 7,000 square feet of living space, along with modern amenities. Contact Sheriff Construction on 592-618-5702. It's now time for today's Rona Report. Today, the nation recorded 743 new cases. There are now 1,108 persons dead, 18 in the ICU, 11,639 in home isolation. And the total number of confirmed cases around the nation now stands at 53,921. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six meters space between you and others. As for the vaccines, unfortunately, they did not give us the numbers in time. So sorry about that, people. There's none for today. They can't even give us the numbers in time. That's pretty stupid. That actually reminds me, it's now time for today's stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? The iPass we call GCOM. If you ask me, it should be abolished and replaced altogether, as its current form is an outdated relic of the past, an institution made at a time when America's nicest warlord-in-chief, Jimmy Carter, thought Guyanese were too simple-minded to imagine a non-race-based political system. But here we are some three decades later beholden to a system that only benefits party elites and not the average Guyanese. For example, we were supposed to have local government elections since last year. The money was set aside and there were no objections to it on either side of the political aisle, save for just one. The government wanted Lowenfield and friends gone before they hold the election. A reasonable request, considering the mess those individuals put us through in 2020. But despite widespread support, it still took the majority of last year to even get rid of Lowenfield and friends. And here we are in 2022, and because seven old folks can't agree on a new CEO and DCEO, we still haven't had elections. Now, ask yourself, why must our democratic right to vote be delayed because of the selfish whims and fancies of a few privileged political persons who are literally partisan by design? And, to top it all off, you didn't even vote for said individuals. You didn't even directly vote for the people who chose said individuals. Isn't it interesting that in Guyana, you have no say on who is the person who runs the elections? Maybe that's why things stay the same for the common man, no matter who's in office. Or, in Joseph Stalin's words, it doesn't matter who votes, only who is counting the votes. That's why we need to put some pressure on the government to bring some changes to this political system. Because if you ask me, letting it stay the same is pretty stupid. You can multiply your cash by selling Digicel Top Up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a top-up vendor quick and easy through Cellular Plus. Call them on 685-3109 for more info. Moving on to uncut news, viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in the nation, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, do you think it's a good idea that the Ministry of Health is restricting the number of tests and clearance forms that it's currently giving out? Iron Liver says the Ministry of Health should not restrict any testing because if someone was exposed or feels as if they have the Rona, they have a right to be tested, especially those who work and need medical sick leave. What excuse they're going to give their employer? I feel like I have the Rona, so I must stay home? Who's going to buy that? I mean, that's, that's actually a very good point. Tarifa Wolford says no. How could you do that? People need to be tested now. This is forcing you to find the money to go pay to get tested when it's supposed to be free. Lash says no to restricting tests. There are people that died from the Rona because they did not know they had it and didn't seek treatment. Instead, if the government's testing facilities are overwhelmed, surely they can broker agreements with some of the smaller private hospitals and clinics to provide testing for free, or at the very least subsidize costs for the small man. And finally, Barefoot Wanderer said, Limit PCR test? Is this the start of the unraveling? Because it's not only happening in Ghana. Yes, it seems like worldwide they really have no idea what to do with this virus. Pity. So stay safe out there, people. Before we get to tonight's question, 
Hey, I'm interrupting this program to let you know that not all truck parts are created equal. Some does work hard without any problems for a long time, while others does make your truck broke down quick and got you running your pockets again. Get genuine high quality parts from powered automotive truck spares and engine parts and extend the life of your repair. They're the authorized dealer in Guyana for Hammer USA products like brake valves, clutch discs, universal bearings, and other s Visit them at 1161 EE Eccles or call them on 6970171. Powered Automotive, the number one truck and engine parts store in Guyana. If you didn't know, well, now you know. Now for tonight's question. What is the single largest, most impactful thing that we can do to help improve the electoral process in this nation? Think about the question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in the next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Enrico Bullford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now.